Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I paint a paper bag. This is what the finished painting looks like. And if you're interested, uh, here is a rough reference photo. It's not exactly the same angle as uh, what I've painted, but close enough if you wanted to give it a try and paint it yourself. Um, I painted this from life, uh, so my angle slightly different, obviously the the lens of the phone also distorts things a little bit. Um, so yeah, um, I wanted to paint this um, this subject because uh, it was kind of a way for me to cleanse a little bit my my palette, as it were, um, reduce the colors, and uh, uh, focus a little bit on a little bit more on form and on uh, subtlety of color rather than uh, uh, my usual subjects which are a lot of times fruit or other colorful things um, and a lot of times it's easy to get a little lost in the color and uh, uh, this is kind of a good exercise to sort of retune yourself to be able to see more colors uh, it's kind of it sounds kind of weird that you know reducing the amount of colors that you paint will let you see more colors but in reality it's true it allows you to notice more if all you see in front of you is brown and gray um, you're kind of forced to really pick out the subtleties in those colors um, so I start starting off with a very rough kind of sketch using a little burnt umber and ultramarine blue and um, diluting that with a little bit of linseed oil. I think for this video what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna talk through the whole thing um, I'll just sort of come in here and there and um, add you know wherever I think there is some value to add but otherwise it'll, this will be a real-time video of me painting and uh, hopefully it'll, you'll find something valuable in it. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and put on some music and I'll come back in a little bit um, once we start getting into colors a little bit.
All right, let's see where we're at. Uh, so I have the drawing more or less figured out. I put in some background color. Um, at this point, it's pretty simple. It's just uh, gray. <clears throat> I don't really use black, so I've mixed this gray using ultramarine blue, uh, burnt umber, and some titanium white. And uh, I kind of like putting in the background first because it gives me a good, uh, I mean, for, there are a couple of reasons for that. It gives me a good um, reference point for the main subject. So if you're painting and you don't have any kind of background color, um, you may be way off. And once you put in the background color, you have you have to kind of go back and adjust. And it's it's really it's easier to adjust the background color than the, than your main subject color. Um, the other reason is that you when you put in the background color, you have an opportunity to overpaint your edges a little bit. And so when you put in when you're putting in your sort of solid foreground colors, um, you can have a nice sort of you can go over that edge and have a nice clean line between your background and foreground colors. So <clears throat> now I'm uh, mixing up the the color of the actual paper bag and uh, using some uh, yellow ochre. Uh, some um, chromium green and white uh, for that and it's kind of going back and forth um, if you you know if you find that the color is a little too green you can add a little bit of red to it uh, like burnt, burnt sienna and if it's too you know if it's too yellow you can go back in with a little bit more of a purple sort of to balance things out. You're kind of working between the, the different complements of your colors to find the right the right balance. And then obviously once in a while just kind of slap a little dab of paint on the on the surface of your painting and see how that looks and if it, you'll see right away whether it's you know whether it feels right or not. Kind of dulling it down a little bit with uh, burnt umber and at the end of the day it's not crucial that the color that you mix exactly matches what's in the subject really what's more important is that the color in the painting works with other colors in the painting so that's the more important part so Felt like those colors were a little too, weren't quite right. Maybe they were a little intense, a little too green, maybe. So, pretty easy to correct, just scrape it off and go back at it. All right, I'll let you watch me struggle to find the right color. And I'll come back in a little bit again. So now that I've found my kind of overall dark mid-tone, um, I'm going to go ahead and just block things in. Very rough still at this point. Um, just kind of breaking up the subject into areas of dark 
and then I'm gonna come in back and draw in my light colors. At this point it's just big shapes, um, gives me a nice little base upon which to add more detail and you know find some subtleties and different variations in color and light. So now that I have uh, my darks and my lights put in, now I'm slowly kind of beginning to bring in some of those middle tones and uh, breaking it up into even smaller shapes. And for the middle tones I'm um, going a little bit cooler um, because 
as the <clears throat> as the light sort of begins to scrape over the subject, uh, creating those metal tones, um, somehow it feels like it's cooling off a little bit. That's how it kind of feels to me as I'm watching the subject. It's still very rough. It still looks like a kind of like a poster, uh, but it's slow, slowly getting there. And I think eventually it'll get there. Right now, I still have a lot of those uh, dark outlines, which eventually I want to try to more or less kind of cover up. Um, but having those there sort of helps to kind of keep keep my mind on the drawing more or less. Because I'm going over a darker area or an area that has um, dark paint in it, um, if I'm applying a lighter color, uh, what begins to happen is that that dark paint starts to mix in with my lighter color and um, it kind of makes it much less saturated. So <clears throat> whenever I'm going over those edges, I have to be a little bit more saturated with my paint. Uh, <clears throat> to compensate for that mixing in of the of the darker color and kind of graying out that's what what you saw me um, adding more yellow and red into that color
So now the front of the bag is beginning to look okay. It's got some good definition between lights and darks. Uh, the, the thing that still is quite a bit off about it is that those deep shadows right now are just, they feel very dark and black and it's sort of giving it a bit of that poster look. So I want to go in there and define those a little bit more. I'm also working on getting rid of as much of that outline as possible. So I'm going to go in with my background color and clarify those edges a little bit, getting rid of, especially getting rid of some of those um, darker lines on the light side of the bag, because those, those sort of get in the way of the illusion of depth. A lot of times the, to create depth between the foreground and the background, it's really just finding that, that contrast between the lightness of the foreground subject in the light area and its darkness in the, in the dark area and that the, the relationship between the lightness of the background and the darkness of the shadow versus the darkness of the background and the lightness of the lights. <clears throat> those, um, those two things really do wonders for creating depth. You can see that uh, from this photograph that the darkest part of this uh, bag is actually right underneath that flap where there's a cast shadow from the from the little flap that, that falls on it and um, that's um, it's the darkest part because there's really a very little uh, light that can be reflected in, into it so that's what I'm uh, mixing up now uh, it's kind of like a dark brown color uh, right now it, what I have there is uh, a little too gray and bluish color uh, which is from my initial drawing so I want to lighten it up a little bit uh, but still keep it the darkest part of the picture and uh, whenever I'm uh, adjusting colors and uh, applying colors in general I always try to use that opportunity to continue to refine my edges and continue sort of to solidify the drawing so if I see edges that need to be adjusted or um, piece of drawing that needs to be refined I'll go ahead and make those little adjustments while at the same time I'm correcting the the colors edge between the between light and shadow uh, or an edge between a, a cast shadow and the light uh, part um, there's usually a little bit more saturation so and I'm not sure why that happens it probably has something to do with the way the light bends or whatnot but it's something that I've noticed and uh, it's something that I would like to indicate in the on this painting right now so 
and it's probably a little bit uh, extreme right now uh, but I'll have a chance to go back in and adjust things um, it's just there sort of as a reminder that it's there and then in this uh, edge like the side of the of the bag now we have a lot more light coming in uh, because well first of all I have another light on the on my right side um, that's my kind of ambient light but there's also a lot more reflected light coming into the to that area because we were, we're much closer to the to the surface that the bag is sitting on and because that surface is uh, is much cooler than um, uh, what happens is that begins to cool off the the color of the bag as well so I'm uh, working in a little bit of the blues and the grays from that surface into the bag to account for that temperature change
All right, I think things are coming together nicely. It's starting to look like a bag. I think one thing that's still um, a little bit off here is that big area of white, or not white, but that big area of light uh, at the top of the bag that's a little too plain. It just sort of doesn't have any form to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of um, kind of half tones. And um, this color that I'm applying right now is probably a little bit too too dark, so I'm going to kind of work back into it with my lighter colors and soften it up a little bit. The other thing I'm doing is uh, I'm also kind of building up the surface a little bit, adding a little bit more texture to my paint um, so that you know it, the, the painting should have a slight sort of three-dimensional quality as well, I think. So the the most texture should happen in the um, in the lights, especially the highlights. So those things are the things that kind of should jump out at you much more than the shadows. If you have too much texture in the shadows, um, it'll actually distract from because you want shadows to kind of fall back back in towards the painting towards the back of the painting, and then you want the uh, you want your lights to jump forward. And so if you have a lot of texture in the shadows, that sort of competes with that idea of having things fall back into space. Of course, there's not, these are not, you know, hard set rules, and there's plenty of artists that break those rules, and they have amazing looking paintings, but I think it's just good to know kind of these baseline things and just build off of them, just be, be aware of them as you're painting and then choose to break the rules later if you want to not because you're breaking rules because of because you don't know better but because you want to it should be a choice a decision so I guess you might be wondering by now what is inside this bag or maybe you're not but let's talk about it anyway uh, could be lunch. I don't know. Maybe it's a uh, it's a packed lunch. Um, I think the kind of the interesting thing about this subject is that people can project their own meaning into it. So, you know, for somebody it could be lunch. For somebody else, it could be, you know, a bag of treats, maybe some candy or something, just from the candy store. I mean, in reality, I just stuffed it with some newspapers to make you feel full, but, you know, if you're looking at the painting, <clears throat> if you're looking at this painting, you don't really know. And that's kind of the fun part of it. I think it's kind of fun to take mundane objects, like a paper bag or cardboard box, and make it beautiful, make it interesting, make an interesting painting out of it. So I don't know. If you think this is this painting is interesting, let me know in the comments, or you know, let me know otherwise too. I think it's kind of fun.
I think the next thing I want to do is work on the top flap of that bag. It's uh, looking a little, a little flat. So there's a lot of details there, um, a lot of variations in color. There's also a little fold that I want to try to capture. I'm going to adjust the, uh, the front face of that flap a little bit, making it a little bit darker and also kind of squaring off those corners just a tad. Feels like it needs a little bit more saturation there. Kind of going more towards the brown and a little bit away from the greens. And I try to stay away from thin brushes as much as I can. And um, Sometimes you kind of need a little bit more detail. So I, I try to do as much as I can with the edge of the brush. And if that doesn't work out, um, I'll also sometimes take a palette knife and just use the, the sharp edge of the palette knife to define some things as well. Which I think I'm going to try to do here in a little bit. There's a lot you can achieve by going sort of against the two different colors. So taking one color and then applying a mark and then uh, going in with a different color or um, you know the opposite color and just pushing back against that mark. But in some cases you need a little bit more of a finer tool. And I generally don't really paint with, with palette knives. Um, I you know, I use I use the palette knife to <clears throat> mainly scrape to scrape things off. But uh, in this case, it feels appropriate and kind of necessary to uh, to refine that little crease right on top of the that handle. And um, I think it's a good opportunity also to define that right edge of that flap as well as comes up into kind of a fine corner sorry about my sleeve um, i'm just working around the background sort of using the background color to adjust the edge as well And I think that corner is looking much better, sort of coming into focus. The color of the kind of the crease on the very top is probably a little too dark now that I look at it. Um, could be a little bit more subtle. See what I mean when I when I talk about sort of edging in front with a different color to define that line. Even though the brush is pretty big, I'm able to sort of really control that edge with it.
All right, I think uh, probably getting close to being done with this one. A couple of other things that I wanted to adjust here is still that uh, the edge of the bag between the bag and the the cast shadow on the wall that's a little um, a little vague right now and uh, I also feel like the the surface right in front of the bag could feel a little bit more solid so I think I'm gonna add a little bit more light there I think overall this painting came out not bad um, I think that if I was painting it again what I would have done, what I would like to do is um, have a little bit less contrast in this front face of the bag. I think that I think it's a little a little too heavy, a little heavy handed on the contrast, but I mean I don't think it's bad, but I think it could be a little bit more subtle and a little bit more um, how you say could make it feel a little bit more papery and soft. Um, and I think especially those creases, um, even though that's how I saw them when I was painting them, I think that looking back at this painting, because I'm narrating this after after the fact of, you know, when I paint, I don't narrate. I just sort of focus on the painting. But um, because I'm looking at this kind of with fresh eyes and after a little bit of time, I realized that those creases are going across, even though they're there, I think that they're, they're distract a little bit. Like I almost want it to be a little bit more amorphous and a little bit more kind of subtle. But that's for next time. I think that as long as you can look back at your paintings and see little lessons you've learned and little things that you want to do next time, I think it's all good. And that's what I try to do with all of my paintings, is to have a little bit of a lesson at the end. Um, and something to kind of move towards in the next painting. I don't know, but uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Whether um, this style of, um, this format of video is uh, working for you with, uh, you know, a bunch of music and me kind of jumping in here and there to say a few things that... I feel are pertinent to the painting. Um, obviously, um, it's probably more useful to have commentary throughout, but um, for me, I just need, um, you know, I just don't have uh, enough time to create these videos with full commentary. So if I can produce more of these videos and get them out there, you know, I feel like that's more helpful than not creating any videos at all. So yeah, let me know what you think about that, and uh, let me know what you think about how this painting turned out. Um, uh, if you are not subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Uh, in my next painting, I might be painting some bricks. So that's exciting, right? Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to do a couple of videos, these kind of mundane objects. I have um, quite a few of them that I've painted. I have some bricks. I have some shovels, some, I do have a cardboard box too, so, which I mentioned. Anyway, stay tuned, there's more to come, and uh, I hope you're enjoying my videos. Alright, until next time, bye-bye.